My name is Miss Tuesday Juniper Galloping Fandango Truefish, but you can call me Tuesday for short. Very nice to meet you. And I'm I've got a very important job on the river. I wonder if you can guess what it is. I'm a beachcomber. I wander up and down the banks of the river and I'll pick up stuff that's been washed up or lost. And sometimes I collect stories. Now, these stories have always been collected by the true fishes. We're a very old family. It all started back with my great 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 Two. So I need somebody to think of a number, favourite number between one Five. and seven. What's that? Four. That's a very good idea. Let's have that. Let's see what we've got here. Right. This is a very good story. Now hold on a second. I'm just going to have to memorise it. All right. This is the story of the magic washing machine. Now this story starts in a very ordinary kitchen in very ordinary East London. And the hero of our story, Tom, had agreed to help his mum with laundry even though he didn't feel like it. And he noticed a very small, very blue light at the back of the washing machine. Now Tom peered in to see if he could see what it was. We couldn't tell. Now the heroine of this story, Layla, his sister, she suggested that they both climb into the washing machine to try and find out what it was. So in they climbed. As you can imagine, it was very uncomfortable for two people to fit themselves into a washing machine. But once they got in, they were amazed to discover how big it was and how much stuff was in there. It was like Doctor Who's TARDIS. My favourite jumper! said Layla as she spied her favourite cream and green jumper that had been missing since last Christmas, only to discover he would shrunk a bit in the wash. My favourite trousers, said Tom, only to discover they had befallen the same fate. Behind their backs this whole time, the water pipe had been filling up the massive drum of the washing machine and they didn't notice a single thing until the machine lurched into action and began to swing them both from side to side. The water was warm but not hot. Layla said, Thank goodness for environmentally friendly low temperature washes as we'd be boiled alive. Around them swung jeans and trousers and jumpers and socks. And then the spin cycle of the washing machine began and it got faster and faster and faster and faster. It was faster than the ripsaw ride at Alton Towers. And Tom and Layla got very, 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 very dizzy. machine reappeared the very very small very very blue light and Tom and Layla began to walk slowly towards it and as they did it got bigger until when they realised it was the sky where were they Tom said is this washing machine land now Layla had noticed people wearing fur bonnets and corduroy waistcoats and long skirts and boots tied together with string. She said, No, I think we've travelled back into the past as a result of being in the spin cycle of Mum's washing machine. Now they were very lucky. They travelled to a bit of the past because a lot of fun. But they could have been unlucky, for example, ended up in June 1858 when everybody in London threw their toilet water into the river and it got very, very hot and very, very smelly and everybody called it Great Stick. They did it. They landed 
1st of February 1814. Now hands up who can guess what might have been happening in London 1st of February 1814. I'll tell you. It snowed all the water. colder and colder and colder till the whole river became a massive sheet of ice. Now the people that lived on the River Thames, they decided to make the most of the frozen river and they had a frost fair and Tom and Layla joined in the fun. They ice skated on the river, they had snowball fights, they built a snowman, they ate baked potatoes and toffee apple and cinder toffee, great big mugs of hot chocolate. And at the end of the day, they saw a real life, life-size elephant, a rump in his way the tents. Tom said, I didn't know the past could be so much fun. It is brilliant. The sun began to set over the frozen river and Tom and Layla realised that it was time they should be getting home for their tea but they'd walked a long way and they couldn't remember where the back of the washing machine was. They decided to sit on the banks of the river to try and think of a plan when all of a sudden Behind them appeared a very strange figure. Hello! I'm sorry if I made you jump. My name's Mrs. Mudlark. Now I noticed you earlier. I thought you must be from the countryside because you had such peculiar clothes on. You can look a bit lost, darlings. Can I help you? Tom and Layla explained to Mrs. Mudlark that they had travelled to the past from the future as a result of going through the spin cycle in their mum's washing machine and they didn't know where the washing machine was and if they didn't get back in home for their tea they'd be in trouble. Mrs Mudlark said she didn't know what washing machine was but she knew how to help them. They needed a rainstorm followed by a thunderstorm followed by a hurricane followed by a tornado which would spin them round and round and round so they came back to where they came from. And she had a spell to do this now. Could everybody help me to recreate the spell? Mrs. Mudlock did. Yeah, okay, brilliant. So all you have to do is say what I say after me. Is everybody ready? Yeah, okay, whip this string. And these bubbles. And these bubbles. Get these children out of trouble. Get these children out of trouble. didn't notice the difference. And then in the distance they heard this. If you all do this, it was the sound of the wind getting up. This is it. That's the sound of the rain starting to happen. And then the rain got harder. ended up outside the washing machine in East London, very wet hair. Tea's ready, said their mum. Tom and Layla noticed that the very, very small blue light disappeared from the back of the washing machine. But there was something else in there. So Tom reached in to try and see what it was. This was it. Tom and Layla kept this until they were all grown up. And nobody has heard this story until today. These stories uh, were written um, as a result of me doing workshops with the children from St John's the Baptist Primary School in Hackney and Gwyn Jones Primary School in Leightonstone, so they were written with their help.